Hello everyone and welcome back to McKegg's Movie Mayhem in association with WBBJ7 Eyewitness News. I'm your host, Elon McKegg, and today I'm going to be doing the movie review for Knock at the Cabin. We were called and are united by a common vision, which has now become a command that we cannot ignore. The four of us are here to prevent the apocalypse. Now, Nog at the Cabin is the newest suspense thriller movie by M. Night Shyamalan. And I will have to say, for the first time, I don't believe there was a plot twist in this movie. No, M. Night Shyamalan, very much known for his plot twists, especially with The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, and Signs. All of his movies, for the most part, have a plot twist in it. And watching this movie, it was the first time I was look, watching and going, I don't think there's a plot twist at all. And that in itself is a plot twist because whenever anyone watches an M. Night Shyamalan movie, it's just, okay, when's the twist going to happen? And when it doesn't happen, that's the twist. And I have to say, it was a little refreshing to watch an M. Night Shyamalan movie and not have a plot twist happen because a majority of the time, again, when you're watching his movies, you just wait for the plot twist to happen. You just expect it to happen, and it didn't happen. So, yeah, good for him for not writing a plot twist in the movie. But I really did think that this movie did a really good job with the premise of it, with these four characters right here going to a cabin out in the middle of woods that is currently being occupied by a family that is on vacation, and the four people are basically saying, hey, the apocalypse is coming, and the only way to stop it is if you... If you three choose to kill one of you, like you have to choose it and you must be the one to commit the act. We can't do anything. We're just here to make sure that it happens and to show you that it's going to happen. And I really thought it was a really good movie. I thought, the, again, the plot line was really well done. Dave Bautista, who played sort of like the main antagonist, if you want to say that, I, the only reason why I say main antagonist is because compared to Jonathan Groff and Ben Aldridge, who plays the married couple, um, Eric and Andrew, they are very much our protagonists, and these four are very much the imposing forces, the antagonistic forces. And so Dave Bautista plays the leader of that group, and he does an amazing job. I mean, I will say this, and I will continue to say this, Dave Bautista is the best wrestler to actor transitional star he was the he's the best one to do it he's better than the rock he's better than john cena he's someone that i look at and believe like oh this person actually wants to act and he wants to get better and he keeps on going to get better and i think that he proved it in this film very much the the presence of his character is very much oh i'm very terrified of you because it's dave bautista he is a big man Whilst also at the same time, I feel sympathy for you because the character that you're portraying has a lot of sympathetic features and he is a very sympathetic character. And I felt that very much with Dave Bautista. Also, when it comes to Jonathan Groff, he does a really good job for a majority of the point. But then it's like it's not really until the third act. That's when he starts showing a lot more of his range as an actor. And I feel like if we would have gotten more of what was happening in the third act, maybe... The other stuff would have been a lot better. Ben Aldridge throughout the entire movie does a really great job being the main disbeliever of these four. He plays the character of Andrew and he very much disagrees with everything that is happening with these four. He doesn't believe in it at all and he does a really great job. Now the other three of the four, they're okay. They're doing a serviceable job. I really hate to say that because Rupert Grint, who is known for playing Ron Weasley in the Harry Potter movies, he is in this movie, and he is barely given anything to do. He's, like, in a short bit of the film, and then, yeah, I, he's, a, he's an actor that I wanted to see more of because I just know him. I grew up with him as Ron Weasley, so I just wanted to see more. Overall, I think this movie is a very suspenseful film. I think there are some moments, again, with the other three besides Dave Bautista. could have been done a whole lot better. I feel like the story, again, was really good and very straightforward, Not no need for a twist, but at the same time, I feel like 
there were moments in the plot that I wish could have been improved. I can't really say anything other than that because it would spoil a little bit more of the movie than what the trailers have shown you. But yeah, I think this was a very good movie. I feel like people would enjoy this movie. So overall, I give this movie a three and a half out of five stars, a seven out of 10. Next week, the second place runner up in this week's poll is going to be the movie I watch next week because there's no new movie coming out next week. So next week, I'm going to be watching the comedy film 80 for Brady. But until next week, I've been Eli McKegg with WBBJ7 Eyewitness News, and I hope you all remember to watch movies.